Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome to another game of the Skilling Open Grand Final. And this time I would like to show you the game number four. So I show you already game number one where Magnus Carlsen won. Very beautiful and very great technique uh, how to dismantle the fortress. So if you haven't seen that, check over there. Very important game and very, very beautiful. And then we had the game number two where Wesley so equalized. He had the winning position, Magnus equalized and uh, Wesley pushed, pushed, pushed until Magnus uh, made a mistake and finally Magnus blundered and uh, Wesley so equalized. Then we had the game number three where uh, Magnus won confidently and this is the game number four where Wesley so have to win if he wants to equalize. Uh, so without further ado, let's see what happened in this very important game. Wesley so definitely has to go for some interesting opening. So we have e4, we have c5, we have knight f3, knight c6, Sicilian defense on the board, open variation, we have uh, knight d4 and now knight f6, pretty standard, knight c3 and now e5, Sveshnikov. Uh, Sveshnikov is well known and th there are options for black actually to to go for a draw pretty easy. Uh, I mean easy for may maybe for Magnus Carlsen uh, if his opponent don't play something really unique and special. Magnus played Sveshnikov against Caruana in their match and the match if you remember uh, ended with the 12 draws. So we had the 12 draws. So it's very, very difficult actually to win the game uh, with the white pieces against Sveshnikov. So this is why it's gonna be very difficult. Knight d to b5. This was played. Now we have d6. Uh, and here the main idea actually is bishop g5 uh, pinning the knight. And now after a6, uh, knight a3. Uh, and then after b5, this pawn gonna come to the to the b4. So now knight d5, and as you see, it's pretty interesting. Uh, and uh, this knight is still pinned. So bishop e7 has to play. And there are a lot of very interesting variations here. Very sharp. So this is just crazy opening. But Wesley so went for even more interesting one. Knight d5 immediately. So he has the first threat. What he wants to do is actually jump to c7. So black doesn't have much choice. We have knight d5. Uh, we have e takes on d5. And now this knight has to go somewhere. So uh, the main idea here is knight b8. Knight e7 is worse. Uh, knight b8. This is what most of the players play. And now pretty natural is actually c4, a6, knight c3 uh, and so on. So this is well known this is the main line however Wesley so went for very interesting variation Queen f3 and now what is the idea it doesn't make any sense because if black actually play a3 and the knight retreat to the c3 then black gonna gain a lot of space with f5 and black position is just perfect however uh, believe me or not Queen a3 this is the idea so Queen f3 Queen a3 pinning the pawn so um, this pawn cannot take the the knight and the game starts to be very sharp now uh, the main idea here is bishop e7 However, it's extremely tricky because now white played bishop g5, bishop g5. Uh, and the point is that bishop g5 cannot be played. f6 is the only move. Uh, bishop g5 is just, just the bad move because of knight d6. And this is completely winning for, for white. You cannot come, for example, to the, to the d7 because you're going to have another fork. Uh, if you go to f8, you're going to have knight c8, king g8, knight d6, and the king castle but the rook didn't. That is the problem. So white have completely, you know, very comfortable, probably winning position and uh, impossible actually to, to black to find any counterplay here. So Magnus Carlsen didn't go for bishop e7 and even if he goes, which is the main idea, he definitely would not take this bishop. That is, that would be the suicidal. Uh, but instead he played b6. So in the future, uh, what he wants to do, bring the bishop to the, to the b7 and continue uh, with playing the bishop with this on this diagonal 
task. But now we have bishop g5 anyway, uh, and now how to continue? The queen is under attack, and now if you take uh, with the queen, of course, the knight jumps and win the, the rook over there, so that's not possible. If the queen avoid and play something like queen d7, it's also losing. Look at this. Queen c3, and yes, the knight is under attack, but if knight is taken, then we're gonna have the bishop b5. And as you already see, there is very beautiful pin and the bishop cannot be taken because of the checkmate. So look at this. This is just awesome. So very, very sharp line. Uh, here, what black should play is f6. And now we have five games in the database. All of the five games actually were won by white. Believe me or not, five games in the database, 100% won by white. So why? F6 is the best move in the position. This is all black can do here. Uh, and uh, most of the games went for bishop e3. Bishop d2 is slightly more accurate. However, bishop e3 was played um, three times, four times maybe. And uh, all of them, of course, were win. So uh, what happened, mostly bishop b7, and uh, then knight c7 because the, the rook is already defended. Uh, and then after f5, bishop d3 going after this pawn, uh, which cannot be easily defended, probably f4, bishop d2, uh, and then after bishop e7, bishop f5. And now what you're gonna play? This bishop gonna come to very annoying e6. Maybe you can castle, uh, go with the king to h8, but it's definitely very uncomfortable game for black. White gonna simply castle, and uh, yeah, the the knight can jump to the to the e4. The queen can come uh, to continue the attack on the position on the king, and 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 so on. Um, so very very difficult position even with the with the f6. Magnus tried bishop e7. Uh, but this, as you already see, it's a very bad move. Uh, Magnus, of course, didn't take the bishop in the next move because we have bishop e7. And now the queen cannot take the, the bishop, okay? Because we're gonna have knight d6. So this is how tricky the position is. And after king d7, knight c8, uh, attacking the queen twice. Uh, you cannot def de take the queen because uh, you're gonna lose also this pawn uh, before exchanging, so probably rook c8. And then queen h3 with the check, with the attack on the on the h7 and so on. White have again completely winning position. So queen e7 is not possible. This is why king e7 by Magnus Carlsen and now, very calmly, Wesley saw just castle on the queen side. So we have bishop b7 now taking under control the, the, the rook, so uh, the knight is under attack, so knight c3, and now knight d7. Finally, Magnus want to uh, bring his pieces to the game. Now we have f4 provoking to take. Of course, this pawn cannot be taken because rook e1 is coming and you even don't have any shelters because uh, still there is the pin on the uh, on this diagonal. So that would be the, the very bad. And king f8 again. This is pretty bad for the, for the black pieces. Even queen d6 can be played with the check. King g8 and now queen f4 losing yet another pawn. Uh, and this again, this is just completely losing. So uh, black have to to be extremely careful here we have queen c7 connecting the rooks and now waiting what white gonna do uh, and white just take the pawn in the center so f takes on e5 knight e5 very nice outpost for magnus carlsen now this uh, knight actually controls a lot of squares around so it's like octopus knight but you know definitely defending uh, and it's on the dark square which is very important because white don't have the dark square bishop anymore we have queen before so what wesley so want to do he wants to activate the queen maybe this way so Wesley went simply for h5. Now what is the idea? First, the rook can enter the game this way. The king can be uh, hidden this way. Uh, plus also this pawn on the h7 cannot be targeted by the by, by any, you know, queen h4 um, checks or, or anything. So we have bishop e2 by Wesley. So Wesley is targeting this pawn uh, another way. We have king f8, rook h2, f1, bringing also the rook to the attack on the position of the pawn. And now rook rook e8. So Magnus, look at the coordination of the pieces. Magnus brought the rook to the only open uh, file, central file. This is what he likes to do. We have rook f5 now attacking the pawn. So pawn is pushed. Now we have rook f4. Uh, 
again attacking focusing on the h4 so we have queen d8 now defending and now wesley say okay king b1 now my king is in the safety and of course it's also a move from this diagonal so if magnus would like to uh, play for example queen g5 then the rook cannot be pinned we have rook h6 by magnus carlsen as planned and now rook d to d4 boom Aliehin gun. Is this Aliehin gun? Because it's, you know, it's horizontal. Usually Aliehin uh, use his uh, heavy pieces to attack the position uh, of uh, his opponent vertically. So uh, on the files, but this time it's, uh, it's you know, horizontal on the, uh, on the rank. So I'm not really sure if I can call it Aliehin gun, uh, but let's do it for at least for this video. But you can drop the comment if, if, if I'm right about that. Uh, we have H3. So now Aliehin gun is shooting nowhere uh, and now of course if white takes that pawn then black would have too much activity so we have g3 uh, we have also bishop c8 so now remaneuvering the bishop now what is the idea first uh, this pawn is defended and now the idea for black is somehow bring the pieces to the second rank capture the pawn on h2 and now this pawn gonna be extremely dangerous so that is the you know roughly the idea uh, and now Wesley so went for a4 uh, we have also king g8 so now let's see the position of black pieces is that so bad is definitely white have more activity however how to how to proceed it's very difficult actually to play in that position so uh, for example we have this knight very centralized controlling a lot of important squares um, around here so look at this this is just beautiful uh, we have the bishop defending h3 and also a6 the a very nice placed bishop it's not blocking any pieces um, from the eight rank anymore uh, because you know the rook were moved then the queen is already uh, also on d8 and and so on um, rook supporting the six rank it's very difficult to find the weak spots in the in the black's position so we have rook d to e4 uh, something like you know waiting move uh, wesley so trying to find some ideas uh, but he's struggling with that we have queen c7 magnus has his own idea probably queen c5 this looks very logical and if white avoid uh, the exchange for example playing something like queen b3 then black have always this move queen b1 uh, and then trying to win this pawn it's very difficult actually to find the move which are defending and then this pawn gonna be deadly so a very interesting idea however is that what magnus had in mind i'm not really sure because uh, here the engine actually recommends to move the queen to d4 queen d4 and and then if queen c5 then this queen actually has more squares to go so can uh, retreat for example to d1 and so on uh, but we have rook h4 so this is this move is not liked by engine because now magnus had the chance uh, simply just to exchange uh, and then just follow this queen c5 and this position probably white would exchange the, the queens if not uh, then black can exchange the queens or uh, you know go for to, to g1 uh, and win the pawn so that would be very dangerous however magnus went for a5 now what is the idea he kicks the queen so he helps wesley so uh, to move the queen to d4 this is what wesley so played but at the same time there is no weakness on a6 so the bishop can go somewhere so what can be idea of magnus magnus said okay i'm giving you the the square on the b5 so you can go there with the bishop maybe with the knight with attack on the on the queen but my queen is not not gonna stay there but at the same time my bishop is free he doesn't need to guard a6 anymore and he can come for example to f5 with the attack on the rook and also uh, with the attack on c2 for now there is the the knight over there but the knight would be pinned there because if the knight go to the to the b5 then we would have the attack on c2 so probably this is what uh, magnus carlsen had in mind but it's very unprecise move because now after queen d4 uh, only now we have rook h4 rook h4 and now how to continue again queen c5 is the strongest move in the position recommended by the engine and it could lead uh, still to very complicated positions not as great as before however still uh, if you move the knight 
to b5, you have the problem. Knight g6, attacking the rook. What are you gonna do, do with the rook? Uh, your bishop is under attack, so you have to move the rook to e4. And after exchanging, uh, you're gonna have this queen g1. And after king a2, then bishop d7 first because of the queen. And now how you gonna defend the, this pawn? Uh, this is the this is the first question. You have to play something like knight d7, queen h2, and this pawn gonna win the game. So knight b5 is not possible in this position. Maybe bishop b5. The problem is the bishop was defender of f3. So now we're gonna have this beautiful jump. And yes, queen c5 is possible. However, after rook e1 with check, king a2, uh, b takes on c5. Then, uh, for example, rook e4, actually uh, threatening to go to, to e8. So rook e4 would be forced. And then knight h2, again, we have this pawn. So it's also not possible. So probably move the queen somewhere. Queen f4, uh, falling into the fork. This is the fork. Uh, so if the queen want to stay on the uh, on the fourth rank, probably queen e4, but it's still very uncomfortable because of f5. And now the queen has to move somewhere, queen h1, uh, now queen f2, and already white are in troubles. Queen gonna come to g2, and how you gonna how you gonna play? Rook f4 is probably the only move, and after queen g2, then rook f1, and then exchanging. And yes, the material is equal, so white survive. However, the rook on h1 is a very, very passive rook. The bishop has to control g4, otherwise the knight gonna jump over there and so on. So black would have very, very, very comfortable position to, to win. Queen d1, the most crazy line here. Uh, this was possible. Uh, and then black, of course, would have queen f2 again, attacking h2. But white would have very sharp variation here with the knight e4 queen h2 and knight d6 uh, and then after queen g3 let's say attacking this rook and then first rook h3 exchanging this for at least one extra pawn uh, bishop h3 and only now knight e8 and it's very very complicated very double edge uh, white have this uh, passed pawn a uh, black have this two connected passed pawns but this passed pawn is advanced so uh, again this would be crazy but that's the best what actually black can do queen c5 so follow the plan i told uh, magnus carlsen actually this is the plan because he played this queen d8 so everybody was thinking okay queen c5 this is the strongest move in the position however we have bishop f5 so magnus had a different plan as I, as i explained he wants to you know focus on the on the c2 but there is the problem with this move now we have rook h5 winning the pawn, at least pawn. Uh, there are two ways to win the pawn. First would be g4, immediately attacking the bishop. So bishop would have to uh, retreat somewhere. Let's say bishop d7 and then simply rook h3. Uh, bring the rook to the, to the g3 and roll with this pawn. Um, so with the extra pawn, that was one uh, option. Or rook h5 attacking this bishop and now if bishop wants to stay on this diagonal this pawn is lost if want to stay on this diagonal for example bishop c8 then knight b5 and there is no more attack on the on the c2 so that's the problem uh queen e7 losing completely coordination of the pieces magnus probably would have to uh bring the knight to f6 just to open this file and continuing the game however white already stands better here uh, and winning the pawn if not this pawn uh, than this pawn in the future and you cannot defend both of them this definitely is the very bad backward pawn and it's very difficult to um, to defend it uh, however we have queen c8 so what magnus wants to do is still keep the queen on the semi-open c file at the same time point on the on the c2 so the knight of course cannot jump for example to b5 that is the that is the problem but of course this pawn is lost so uh, we still have the this h3 pawn uh, but this pawn on the b6 is lost and here the best what Magnus can do actually believe me or not he has to move the bishop from this diagonal and this is what Magnus want to uh, avoid actually so uh, what he could play here is bishop g4 but his position is already very difficult so for example uh, bishop g4 queen h4 now the rook is under attack so rook h4 uh, so queen f3 
and then after queen b5 white would have to first defend e2 otherwise uh this queen gonna of course win the pawn but at the same time attacking the rook so the rook would have to be moved probably here of course it can be attacked and harassed so rook e8 and now finally rook h3 and it looks like white is completely winning here but black still have some tricks and knight g6 controlling this very important square and now the rook can be attacked this way and trapped so uh, white have to be very precise so for example queen c4 now helping the rook uh, but the, the rook can be attacked this way queen g2 rook h5 now escaping uh, and now the rook can uh, enter the game rook e1 with check uh, king a2 now queen c2 and look at this this is just uh, so crazy queen c8 now knight f8 and yes white stands better but the position is so complicated and there are a lot of continuations here so so queen c4 can be played even queen h3 trying to checkmate but this knight always can come to g6 uh, and defend h8 very complicated very sharp position and it's very difficult also to uh, to say who would win but the white have slightly better for for actually for the for the engine uh, mainly because of it of course it's the extra pawn and probably black gonna lose another pawns maybe this maybe this but also have to be very careful for example now black can play immediately rook e2 uh, and the rook cannot be taken because the queen is hanging so as you see very very sharp position uh, however magnus went for knight g4 so he didn't like this idea he went for knight g4 the problem is this is losing move so this is time to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea So the idea to win the game is to win the piece first. So this bishop is under attack and the queen is the only piece which is defending this bishop. So now the move we are looking for, there is only one, is bishop a6, kicking the queen and the queen cannot defend the bishop anymore. And this is the problem. If the queen goes to d7, the problem is that we're gonna have bishop b5 and the queen has to be moved so queen c8 still keeping an eye on the bishop and now uh we're gonna win the rook so uh you of course if you take the the bishop you're gonna also take uh, lose this bishop so of course being up the rook is uh, enough to win the game this is why magnus first want to move the the his heavy pieces so rook e1 with tempo king a2 and now queen e8 if you try queen e7 it looks like everything will be fine because the bishop is still defended but now very simple rook f5 and after queen f5 queen d8 attacking the the king king has to go to h7 and now we have bishop d3 uh, actually pinning the queen and of course it's winning you cannot even bring the rook uh because the knight actually defend e4 as well so uh, that was not possible this is why magnus went for uh, queen e8 we have also rook f5 this is for free so why not to take we have knight e3 with the tempo on the rook but now bishop b5 attacking the queen misplacing the queen and now after queen e7 magnus carlsen uh, resigned after this move he resigned because he is down the material and he doesn't have any tricks anymore so for example what could happen here wesley simply can go for rook h5 we're gonna have some mating ideas here so probably queen f8 rook h3 and of course there is no no counterplay for black so it doesn't really matter this pawn also gonna be lost uh these pawns are are, are past pawns so there is no sense actually to play that game and uh, probably wesley so would just exchange the queens and go to the uh, very simple end game so there is no hope after queen e7 magnus carlsen uh was really really enraged and he resigned and uh, these are the scores so we have 2-2 two -two in the first day so that was the draw in the first mini match today we're gonna have the second mini match and if it ends with the draws we're gonna have two extra games in the tie break if they are also drawn then we're gonna have armageddon so if you don't want to miss any other games uh, from this tournament this super final press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one